create this video looking at the BTEC Applied Science and understanding unit specifications. There's a number of you who have had a conversation with me either over Instagram or left comments for me underneath my videos which has highlighted that there is a little bit of confusion about what the unit specifications are there for and mainly about how to read them and understanding what it is that's needed as part of your assessments and therefore getting the best out of your studies. So I wanted to first of all just go through the purpose of the specification and then I'll show you how to access it. So in terms of the main purpose, I've written down kind of like a list of five things that the specification is important for. First and foremost, we're looking at the specification informing teachers and learners of what the unit is about. So that's usually in the unit brief and the introduction section. The second point that it covers is looking at the topics that are incorporated into the unit. So looking at things like the essential content, the things that you need to know about. If it's an assignment based unit, it would also have some learning aims. The third purpose is really to go through how the assessment takes place. So given a summary of the assessment, whether it's a written assessment or whether it's coursework based, whether it's internally assessed, whether it's externally assessed. And then it would also cover assessment criteria. Now, in BTEC, we know that the assessment criteria goes from passes, merits and distinctions. So that's the kind of information that would be in that particular section. And then the last part is looking at any essential information for assessment decisions. I call this effectively like the mark scheme of the unit, where it tells you what it is that the teacher is going to be looking for in your coursework so that they can mark it, whether it's a pass, a merit or a distinction. So what I want to show you is how to access the specification online. If you go on to Google and just type in BTEC Applied Science Specification, you should be able to find the specification on the first page or as the first result. Now normally when you go to this it will give you this drop down menu here where it says certificate. Not most of you will be doing the extended diploma so I would click on that and I would just go to download. It comes up with this large 330 page document, so I'd recommend that you don't print out the whole thing. There is no need for you to have all of the units on this specification. Your school or your college will make a decision as to which unit they're delivering, depending on whether you're doing the certificate, the subsidiary diploma, the extended diploma and so on. So the unit content will be as part of the specification. Now, a lot of this information on the specification will be unnecessary for you to, to read through and for you to know about. So the main thing is, is understanding which units you'll be doing. Now, this chart over here is what your teachers in your school, sixth forms, colleges will have used to make a decision on which units they're delivering. The M on here means a mandatory unit. That means you have to have that as part of the qualification. And the O are the various optional units. So you can see there on the top row, you've got the certificate, extended certificate, foundation diploma, diploma and extended diploma. And on the left hand side, you've got a list of all of the units as well as their guided learning hours. So in order for me to go through how to read the specification, I'm going to pick one examined unit and I'm also going to pick one assignment based unit. And essentially, whichever unit it is that you're going to be looking at, you follow the same procedure to read the specification. So the first unit I want to look at is unit seven. This is an examined unit that I teach. So I'm quite familiar with that. Because this is such a large document, I'm going to use the control F function and I'm going to type in contemporary. Um, this is the word that's used in the unit description over here. And it just allows me to find that word various times in this document. I can just use these arrows to find where this um, specification is exactly. So it will be quite far down. There we go. And this particular uh, specification starts on page 91. So this is exactly what a unit spec will look like. You've got the title of the unit. It will tell you what level qualification it is and it will tell you how many guided learning hours or number of credits that they offer for this unit. As mentioned earlier, the first part of the specification is to give you the brief or the introduction into the unit. So that's this section over here. I'm not going to read through this because you can do this in your own time, but I'm just showing you the location of the key pieces of information that you need to know. 
The summary of the assessment is also on the first page where it tells you how this unit is assessed. So it tells us that there is a supervised assessment of two and a half hours, and that's timetabled by Pearson. So that means it's an external assessment. It tells us that the unit mark for this is 50, and the assessment availability will either take place in December, January, or May, June. There are some sample materials um, available for this particular unit, and you can find them on the BTEC website. So that's something you could access by yourself when you're ready to revise for this unit. On the second page of this particular spec, you've got the assessment outcome. So you've got AO1, AO2, AO3 and AO4. Now, all these are assessment outcomes. It tells you what it is that you need to be able to demonstrate or to show in order to get the relevant marks for this particular unit. So it talks about demonstrating knowledge, applying knowledge, making valid judgments, being able to um, apply and synthesize ideas. Okay, so that's kind of the assessment outcome. Page three of the specification shows you the essential content. So this is what the learners or you guys as students have to cover in order to be prepared for the assessment. So you've got learning aims A, B, and if I just scroll down a little bit, you've got learning aim C there, okay? So learning aim A is looking at the scientific issues, learning aim B is looking at the interpretation and the analysis of scientific information, and learning aim C is looking at scientific reporting. So those are the three areas that your teachers will prepare resources on. The next part, which I think is probably the fourth page of the specification, is looking at grade descriptors. So this is showing you what you need to be able to do to achieve a pass and a distinction. It doesn't really cover any information on the merit, though, um, and I'm not entirely sure why that is, but I guess it would be something in between there, of course. But it just gives you an idea of what it is that you need to do. So you, if we just look at the distinction, you're talking about a de demonstrating a thorough understanding of the contemporary scientific issues or the arguments, articulating, justifying conclusions, making links, presenting well-reasoned judgments. And so this is the stuff that you're looking at as to what you need to do in the exam to be able to get a distinction. Your teachers might print this out for you or they might just put it onto your online learning portal like Google Classroom so that you can access this. And this is really to understand what it is that the command words are asking for, what the keywords might be. So terms such as bias, implication, media, quantitative and qualitative data, uh, secondary sources and research, and then you've got things like technical language, social issues, okay? So that's the kind of information that we'd need to, um, that you guys would need to access in order to understand how to approach the questions in this particular unit. And then the last part is always looking at links to other units. So this is where you've got things like any other units that are related to Unit 7 and how they might be related. And there's also a section about employer involvement, and that's not something that you guys need to worry about. It's mainly for the learning um, centres, so your schools or your sixth forms or your colleges, to look at to see how they could make employer links. The next unit specification I want to talk about is Unit 23. Again, this is a unit that I teach also, so I'm very familiar with this one. I've simply found it using the Control F function and just typing in forensic and then scrolling down to see where this particular spec comes up. Again, you've got it as a level three unit and it's an internal assessment this time. So this is a unit that would be created and taught by your teachers and would be internally marked. So your teachers would mark it and assess it. The guided learning hours for this are 60, so it's worth less than the unit seven that I've just talked about. You can see immediately that the setup is very similar to unit seven, where you've got the unit in brief and you've got the introduction over here and it tells you what the unit content is going to entail. This time, though, because it's an assignment based unit, you've got learning aims. So you've got learning aims A, B, C and D. And these effectively will pertain to different assignments. So in this unit, you should have four different assignments. However, sometimes we combine assignments depending on the criteria. So I'll talk about this aspect in a second. If I just scroll down, you can see over here you've got the summary of the unit. Now, you've got the learning aim on the left-hand side, you've got the key content areas, and then you've got the recommended assessment approach. Now, this is really, the recommended assessment approach is really for your teachers to look at. So I wouldn't worry so much about that, but you should be aware of the learning aim and then also look at the key content areas. So these are the bits that are going to be covered by those learning aims. 
The content is then the next part that's set out and it tells you everything that you need to know about each learning aim. So if you scroll down, you'll see learning aim A, B and C over here. And then finally, you've got D over here as well. So it's quite a lengthy unit. Now, this assessment criteria is probably one of the most important things to understand. I would say that this is what you would need to look at first to understand what your assignment's going to ask you to do. In this particular unit, you can see that they've highlighted learning aim A, B, C, and if I scroll down a bit further, learning aim D. But you can see here that the criteria D3 is shared between two learning aims, which basically means that in this particular unit, you will have assignment one, assignment two, and the third assignment where C and D are combined. And these are all the criteria. So in order to say, for example, achieve P1, you need to describe the procedures used to gather evidence for forensic investigation. To achieve M1, you need to justify the importance of the procedures used to gather evidence for forensic investigations, and so on and so forth. Please remember that the BTEC rules state that in order to get a distinction in any assignment, you need to achieve all the passes, all the merits and the distinctions. If you're unsure of the BTEC rules and the gradings, please look at my other video, which is flashing up on your screen now, and that will take you through how the grading works. I guess the second most important thing that I do like to tell my students to look at is this further information section where it says for teachers and assessors. Although it doesn't say it's for students, I think it's important to look at this because this is the section where teachers use to look at your work and make a decision on whether you've met the pass, the merit or the distinction. So effectively, this acts as a mark scheme or some sort of guidance. I normally say to my students that they can create their own checklist based on this essential information to make sure that they've covered all the key information that they need in their work. So for this particular learning aim, say for example, learning aim A, if we're looking at assignment one, for the past, it tells you that learners must describe in detail the procedures used to gather evidence for forensic investigation. It talks about how they're required to cover all the main points in the preservation and recovery of evidence. So if those two points are not there or not there in enough detail, then the learner is not going to get the past standard. Just moving on quickly to the merit, talks about how you have to justify the importance of the procedures used to preserve and gather evidence. So if you don't justify it, the command word of justify means to say why we do what we do, then you wouldn't get this mark. And of course, then you can go into the distinction and learn about what you need to do for the distinction. You can see that it's very similar here for the learning aim B, and it's also similar here for learning aim C and D. C and D, remember, are combined because the D3 criteria is shared across both assignments. So just as a summary, you're looking at the further information for teachers and assessors, and you're looking at this particular page where it says assessment criteria. So now, if you go to any other unit, you can basically find this information really easily and you know exactly what you need to do to be able to achieve that criteria. Of course, you're going to have some questions from teachers and about bits that you don't necessarily understand. And teachers will also have their own assessment briefs that they might give you in advance of setting you the assignment so you can see what the tasks are. But one thing that's really, really clear to me is that it's your responsibility to understand the specification and to ask the relevant questions about what you need to do to complete this unit. OK, guys, so that's all I've got for you today. I hope that was useful. I hope I've not banged on about it for too long or bored you to death with it. If you have got any questions about this or if there's anything that you don't understand or anything that wasn't clear in this video, please leave a comment underneath this video or contact me on Instagram and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching and for all the support that you've offered me so far in allowing me to grow this channel for you. Bye for now.